They call it the Gigabyte Aero 15XC. Not only does this thing pack a punch in regards to performance, but you have deep control over the fan noise and performance delivery. And this is all taking place within the Gigabyte Control Center. Now, the reason this is really great is because let's say you're in a quiet office space and you don't want your computer ramping up to 52 decibels of fan noise. For the sake of this video, I'm just gonna turn everything on its head and show you all the performance benchmarks first and then we'll get into reviewing, you know, how the laptop looks and works. So if you check out the playback times on the Gigabyte Aero 15, you can see it plays back with zero drop frames. For the export times out of Premiere Pro and DaVinci Resolve, they're some of the best I've ever seen on my channel. Now, as far as the simulated benchmarks are concerned, which I'm rarely concerned about, I'm more into the real world tests, but as you can see, it sits to the mid range on Cinebench tests and in the mid lower range uh, of the charts here on the Geekbench tests. Now, if you're a 3D modeling wizard or architecture guru, this laptop absolutely crushes it in Autodesk Maya, 3ds Max, PTC Creo, but struggles in SolidWorks because it is a GeForce, not a Quadro GPU. If you're wanting to complement your video edits with some After Effects or you're just a straight After Effects user, this is almost as good as the recent Asus Zephyrus G14 I reviewed on my channel just a couple weeks ago. So you're in good business with After Effects on the Gigabyte Aero 15XC. As far as Photoshop is concerned, this laptop is the best I've ever had on my channel. And I feel like every time I bring a new laptop on, I'm always saying that because the laptops appear to get better and better every year every month at that. So if you see it's scoring 890 on the Photoshop Puget Systems test, and this is coming out of the i7-10870H processor, the RTX 3070 GPU, 32 gigs of RAM and a one terabyte SSD. Whether you're a video editor, 3D modeler, After Effects user, or designer and photo editor, you gotta check out my full in-depth dive on each of those topics. And those videos will be coming in the following days. Subscribe and ring the bell so you don't miss out on those because I share even more in-depth specs. I test RAM, fan speed, all different things to see how you're to run this laptop to get the most out of it for each specific program. So definitely check out those videos when they come out. Now, as far as the vents and thermals are concerned, this laptop is well vented. You have a vent on the back of the chassis, on each of the side panels, as well as on the top of the keyboard deck. This ventilation keeps the laptop cool and can run quiet, like I mentioned, depending on the fan modes. As you can see, it sits on the lower end of the chart for video editing export thermals, and that's when it was set to gaming mode. So that's the fans running as fast as possible, the processors kicking up as fast as possible, and it keeps this laptop cool and fairly quiet at around 52 decibels. Now, it's not insanely quiet, but compared to something like last year's HP Omen or last year's Asus Zephyrus G14, those got up to around 61 decibels of fan noise when running at this type of performance. Now, the build quality is fantastic. It's an all aluminum top cover, all aluminum keyboard deck, all aluminum bottom cover, but the side ports are plastic. Not exactly stoked about that. Um, I wish they would have just wrapped the aluminum all the way down, as I mentioned in my unboxing, but it's still a well-built laptop. Now, one thing I'm not stoked about is as I open the screen and kind of let it go, it's very bouncy. And if I like go and put my hands on the keyboard or I'm typing, I notice that it continues to bounce. This is kind of annoying, not gonna lie, um, but the screen is fairly thin, and by fairly, I mean really thin, and so you can also see there's quite a bit of screen flex here. So overall, I'm not stoked about how the screen works within the computer um, because it's just, it's kind of annoying, um, but it has an aluminum top cover, aluminum keyboard deck, and aluminum bottom cover with very, very ample vents along the bottom of the chassis. I mean, it's just a huge, open uh, air vent here, which is just great for keeping the laptop cool. Really nice layout of the components. You can see an easy upgrade path. You can go ahead, pop these open, pull out your RAM sticks, and then put new ones in. And then as you can see, um, we have the speakers here as well, and an easily swappable, or you can add an SSD. So really nice opportunity for an upgrade path, meaning that you can add an SSD and both RAMs are swappable. That's fantastic. Now, another thing I wanna point out that's more of a preferential thing is I'm not fond of how they've inlaid the top cover to the full screen assembly. Okay, so as you can see, uh, there's a little bit of a lip here. Okay, they also did the same thing on the keyboard deck. They have that lip right here. So the actual surface of the keyboard deck is inlaid to the side panels. This is fine, it, the, the, the design and the longevity of the laptop is truly fine. I think it'll be a very durable design. Uh, it's not really anything to be concerned about with build quality. It's just more of a preference thing. I like nice smooth edges. I like my screen top cover to wrap around. I like my keyboard deck to wrap down the sides. Um, it, it truly is a preferential thing. So if you're like me, that's something I wanted to point out because there are some catch points. So you can feel your fingers kind of catch on these different spots. They're not gonna cut you, they're not very sharp. It's just a design preference of mine and I wanted to point that out. 
All right, moving down to the uh, keyboard deck, you can see that it's very firm. It's so firm and it just doesn't be bow or bend or push. It just feels really nice. And same with the top cover here. You can see that it, it does not bend or bow either on the top cover. So great design overall as in the build quality. But like I said, the inlays are more of a preferential thing that I'm not fond of. Now let's go ahead and talk about the ports. As you can see on the left side panel, we have HDMI, mini display port, a USB type A, a mic headphone jack, and an RJ45 network port. On the other side, we have the lovely and coveted SD card slot, a power port, the USB type C, that is Thunderbolt, and you have two more USB type A's. This laptop is stacked with ports. I love it. It really takes you on the dongle free life for the most part. I'm sure you guys will use dongles possibly for other things, but literally this is truly an on the go workstation, which I think is fantastic for video editors and photographers. Now, as we're jumping into the keyboard deck, if you're curious about the exact pricing and availability of this laptop, you can head down in the description below and click one of those links. Now, if you do use that link to make a purchase, I will get a small commission, but at no extra cost to you. And that's what keeps this channel alive and the helpful content coming your way. Also, every time you click the like button, it warms up my coffee. So if you keep clicking the like button by the end of this video, it might actually burn me. Wouldn't that be crazy? It's getting pretty warm. Warm it up, boys and girls. All right, now the keyboard. As you can see, uh, RGB keyboard, really nice layout, good separation of the keys. They have a great tactile feel. They're bouncy, bouncy. They're snappy, that's the better word. Um, but one thing I'm not fond of is a little bit of keycap wobble. I don't like keycap wobble. It's something that is a real, real preference of mine. I want a nice, smooth, even press on the key, whether I'm on the edge or the center. I prefer that a lot more. Um, not a deal breaker, not a quality issue, but just the structure and the way the assembly of the key is put together. Um, they have some pretty good function keys, not the greatest. You do have airplane mode. You do have your fan control. You can't put your computer to sleep, control your Wi-Fi, stuff like that. One thing that uh, also is kind of a killjoy for me, I do like that they put the uh, control for the up, down, left, right arrow keys, but they also had to shorten the shift key. And so I found myself often when I was typing, hitting the up arrow key rather than the shift key, which got annoying for me. Um, but it's something that I guess you could get used to. And I did start to get used to, uh, throughout the past week or two, but overall I just, I didn't prefer it. It wasn't a computer I could just jump into and start using super easily. As far as the trackpad's concerned, you do have a fingerprint reader. It's got a good click. It's quiet. Um, as far as the size, it could have been a little bit bigger, honestly. As you can see here, you have about a half inch here. Um, I don't know if you could come much farther down there, um, but it could have been a little bigger, which would have been nice just to have a slightly larger trackpad for uh, creative professionals. Now, as far as the audio experience of this computer is concerned, I was hopeful that there were speakers somewhere up here in the keyboard deck, but unfortunately, they are only under the keyboard deck. Um, so underneath the chassis, you have your computers, and here's an audio test for you. Another standout feature of this laptop is that you get a 4K screen that reaches 390 nits at full brightness and has a color gamut range of 100% sRGB, 100% DCI-P3, and 95% Adobe RGB. And this is all at a Delta E of 1.98. Now, as far as battery life is concerned, it was rather disappointing for creators. I ran the Photoshop Puget Systems benchmark test on repeat, and the battery lasted for about two hours and 18 minutes. Now, for video editing, I ran playback on a 4K Premiere Pro project on loop, and the battery lasted one hour and 34 minutes. These are two pretty intense workflows for this laptop, so it really pushed the laptop to the limits, and it drained the battery pretty quickly. This color-accurate aluminum laptop is fairly thin and light for the punch that it packs, and I think creative professionals will find it a great tool for their day-to-day -day workflow. Don't forget about the links, the likes, and the subs. I'll see you guys in the next one.